Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. Thank you for staying tuned. This is African Independent Television ART here in Benin City, uh, Edo State, Nigeria. I am your host, PC Akbinda, and you're on to another edition of Issues and Tissue, a developmental program that seeks to address issues of development in a dual state and environs. So yeah, today we have another interesting guest and topic, and uh, this is election period, you know, here in a dual state, uh, Benin City. As we will be going to the polls to elect our governor for the next, you know, four years after the 19th of uh, September. Yes, uh, and the activities are actually going up. And those state is bubbling. And uh, we are trying to meet with all, if not most, um, actually most, if not all, rather, of the political parties here in Edo state. I'm um, Musayi Usadibami Francis a lecturer in the Department of Political Science, University of Benin. I'm from Ovia Northeast and Benin by tribe. Well, um, like it's always said, when the head is bad, the whole body will be bad. When the head is good, the whole body will be good. So I think and I feel that uh, Governor Godwin Nogegase of Baseki has brought dexterity to governance. He has shown to the world, and indeed to a do light, that governance is not about primitive accumulation, but it's all about service to the people. He has also shown that no matter how, ma how far a man has power, the man should be able to manage that power effectively and efficiently. Otherwise, with what has been happening in return times, it was enough for him to deploy the state power to crush every violent opposition that come across his way. So for me as a person, uh, what I have seen in Obaseki is that the man is gentle, is humane, is humble. And um, I also think that a, quite a lot of person supports him because of his humane disposition. He is a kind of character that every Edolite we want to have as a governor. A man who did not tinker, who does not tinker with state resources. A man who do not believe that because you are in opposition and then you are doing something wrong and it crushes you, as we have witnessed in several or uh, his predecessors in power. He has been very, very efficient in the management of state resources. He has been efficient in the management of human and material resources. Even those that surround him, you could see that when it comes to PDP, even those who were mole in his government, even those he knew quite all right that were brought into government by Oshomole, by Ize Yamu and other leaders of the party. He refused to sack them despite repeated appeal and pressure from a dolite, from, from, from politicians, from leaders of thought, spiritual and traditional. He refused to sack them because he believed that at the end of the day, we are all citizens of this state. We are the same brothers, we are the same sisters. I can tell you authoritatively that as a lecturer in a federal university, in terms of motivation, in terms of salaries, in terms of allowance, we are nowhere compared to what the state institutions, staff of state institutions get. Ekboma, for instance. My status as a lecturer too in the University of Benin and my equal, my contemporaries in Abrosale University, the difference is about 50,000 naira. The allowance that we fight for every day on the base of which we are on strike and academic allowance. Since the inception of government, staff of Ambrosalo University, I mean academic staff of Ambrosalo University, they have been receiving that allowance. In fact, it has formed a major part of their salaries. That is why you hardly find them going on strike. You hardly find them having problem with government or with management of the university. Because everything that matters to academic staff, the state gives to them. 
unlike those of us in the federal institutions, everything we get from government, we must go on strike, we must fight, we must struggle, we must labor to make sure that sometimes the, okay, we have been on strike for the past three months now because the, the society is not aware because there's a complete shutdown of all institutions in the country. If we resume tomorrow, then parents will realize that federal university lecturers, ASU members, are on strike. This cannot be said about tertiary institutions in Edo State, the one that is being managed or the ones that are managed by the state government. A few days ago, we, we even though now that school is on lockdown, this government, this particular government, still give them their monthly subvention. See, pay monthly subvention, some to the tune of 90 million, some to the tune of 92 million, even though the staff are, are, are at home. Government, this same state government, still pay their salaries between 23 and 28. This is unprecedented in the history of tertiary institutions in this state and indeed in this whole country. As a lecturer in the University of Benin, as I'm sitting down with you, I have not been paid my July salary. Even those who registered on IP's platform, some of them were only paid just yesterday, July salary. Why state workers have been paid since on the 24th of July? That alone is enough for every right-thinking person, whether as a civil servant, whether as a public servant, whether as a lecturer, as long as you are working under this state government, it is enough for you to work for this man. It is enough for you to support this man. It is enough for you to believe on this man. It is enough for you to stand for him. It is enough for you to stand by him. It is enough for you to stand with him. In terms of tertiary institution, Governor Norgase Obaseki has performed beyond expectation. That I will say alive, that I will say in debt. There is no man, no predecessor in office that can compare to what Obaseki has done in terms of tertiary institutions in this state. No. He has done credibly well with an unblemished record when it comes to management of academic institutions in Edo State. The day Oshomole announced the establishment of a state university in Iyamu, University of Science and Technology, he also immediately announced the upgrade of College of Education in Kiadolo to federal to state university of education. He completed Edo University, Iyamu. He eventually converted it from science. A technology, a science and technology university to a, a, a general university, a public university. While in Ekadolo, it only the only thing he did in Ekadolo was to change the name from College of Education Ekadolo to Tayo Akwata University Ekadolo. No block was molded there, no smith was transported there, no bricklayer was employed there, no uh, uh, workman was, em was 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 employed there. So he left Ekadolo the same way worse than he met it. This school was in Shambo. Obaseki came in and started paying them their salaries. Until federal government took over a Kiado law and converted to Federal University of Education, a Kiado law Edo State. Now these same workers are federal staff. From what I know, what we gathered from government is that government summoned meeting with the, 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 the staff of the institution and said, come, let me pay you one month now and then we negotiate further. They said no. They don't want to re receive one more salary. All their entitlement must be paid. And then the man said, I cannot pay you all entitlement. Since all these years you have been at home for over three years, I have been paying you. He has been paying them. Since he came into power, he has been paying them every month. But now the man has said, he said, come, look, the university is no longer within the purview of state government. It's now federal government responsibility. And the federal government is saying now that, look, we are working there. If by the time we finish, when we start full implementation, then of course all of you will come and employ again. We come and sorry, we come and uh, apply again for employment. And so you cannot now blame that on Governor Godwin Obaseki, because the man has done the best. Is there any institution in this in this country that is shut down, that is not existing, that the federal government will continue to pay? Is there any institution in this country, whether they are states? institutions. The institution is closed down and the state government will continue to pay. No. But if Obaseki has done this for several years, he deserves some credit. He deserves kudos. What these people should have done was to channel the energy they are using to protest to the Federal Ministry of Education. 
to ask that they be paid. Not the state government. Obaseki has done. Listen, Obaseki that you know, we never joke with workers' welfare. Never. If you see what he is doing across institutions, whether, uh, 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 whether post-primary education or whether uh, 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 universities or whatever, you, uh, 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 anything institutions, you will find out that Obaseki does not joke with the welfare of workers. If you are sitting there, though, many state governments as we speak, they are not able to pay salaries. But also Obaseki is paying salaries and allowance to date. He does not joke with it. So they should channel their energy now to the Federal Ministry of Education. To find out what is happening to what is happening to their salaries, what is happening to their welfare, what is happening to their employment. It is no longer the fault of Governor Gordon Obaseki. It now it now the full responsibility of the federal government. I I I I I, I pity them. I feel their pain. I share in their concern. Because when in February, March, the federal government said they are not going to pay us because we did not register on IP's platform. I am a strong member of ASU. I support unionism with the last drop of my blood. If it is genuine, those of us who believe in this struggle will be joined as part of the struggle that they should be paid. But at this instance, it's no longer in the hand of the state government. And the state government has made that clear. So I'm saying to all those citizens, especially those who, is fund, those who are funding the protest, especially the protesters, they should know now that those who are funding them to fight the state government, they are not helping them. Instead, let them write a petition, let them channel their energy to the Federal Ministry of Education to find out the status of their job, to find out the status of their salaries, of their salaries and other entitlement. Because as it stands, there's nothing the state government can do. Even the last time they came, the first time they started this protest, somebody came to come and address it. They said, no, nobody should address them except the state government. And the state government was not around. You should have allowed that person to address you and tell you what you need to know, what you need to hear. So that you cannot just be protesting for nothing. They even confirmed recently that the money he paid to them as subvention has reduced. A man is still giving up to 90 million as subvention, as subvention to that institution that is, not, that is not existing. And you say the man is not trying. Now you ask yourself, who is managing that money? What are they doing with that money? That is a question that they themselves should answer. I share their pain, I share their concern. But at, at, at this time, there's nothing anybody can do at this time. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. One thing I, I know or I like about Governor Baseki is that he does not flaunt his achievement on the media. This is the fourth year now. The fourth year is about to wind now. You have not seen him commissioning any project. But does that mean that he has not done anything? That is not true. Let me tell. Let me just give you a brief of what this man has done. A brief of what this man has done. Judges' quarter. Nobody knows now that Governor Godino Basaki is building judges' quarters. He has completed it. What is left now is for judges to move in. That is one. It was never announced. Secondly, uh, the 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 Chief Justice of the State. Go and look at the structure that has been put in place for the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Why is he doing this? Why did he do that for them? So that these judges will give judgment without fear. Without being afraid that once I give this judgment, somebody will, be, will attack me along the way. Because as we speak, these quarters have all the amenities you can think of. Is it for table tennis? Is it for lawn tennis? Security is 24 hours. Light is 24 hours. I was there a few days ago, so I can tell you this authoritatively. But this is not flaunted on the social media. Or are we going to talk about the, 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 the renovation and the construction of the civil service building? Apart from the renovation, go and look at structures that they started from the scratch and completed it. Just go and see where court proce processes will be, take, will be taking place. The man has constructed all this without mentioning it without flaunting it, without showing it to people that this is an example of what I have done. 
He has done all this. So he believes that for those he is working for, for those he has worked for, they are seeing it in their eyes. So they have no option that to vote for him. Because they know that this is a man who don't brag with what he has achieved. Go to Ambrose University for eight years. The last time structures were built, the last time there was any form of altar of renovation at all, was the time of Loki Benidio. Obaseki is the governor who came to power. And remember that there's a university like Ambrosale University that is owned by the state. Go there and see the structures that are, going, that, that are coming up there. Some that have been completed, some that they are, they are already using. Yet, he did not call the media to go and check, and to go and check it. He did it. Or are we going to talk about the Osiomo power, power, power plant? Go to the civil service building, go to the back there. You will see the step down is there. I was also there a few days ago. I saw it with my, with, with, with my eyes. That we give 24 hours power supply to all government ministry and agencies and department in this state, 24 hours power supply. This man has treaded where even the spirit could not dare trade, where even his predecessor in office could not venture into. Are you going to talk of a dope production center? I went there on Tuesday. I opened my mouth when I saw what was going on there. The people there told us by themselves. Since they started working there, they, they have never blinked their light, not even for once. It is 24 hours. And then we asked government, how are you able to achieve this? He said, we bypass BDC. We get our, uh, our light directly from Transmission Company of Nigeria. So it is 24 hours and government is paying for it. The people don't have fear that, oh, you give me contract. Hey, where will I have light? Let me go and buy it. When you are there, you don't need generator. We went around the whole place and we saw what people are doing based on what Governor Obaseki has put on the ground for them. Are you going to talk about the roads as we speak? If you walk down behind us here, go and look at the roads that have been constructed. Somebody said, hey, a selection is coming. He asked contractors to go. As I was coming back yesterday night, around 8.30, Contractors, we are still inside that night. When we are through with this interview, I can take you there so that you can see for yourself. Everywhere you see roads that the man is constructing, as I speak with you, the 18 local government in this state, they have witnessed the presence of Governor Godwin Obaseki, no matter how small. All the 192 wards in this state, they have witnessed the presence of God, Governor Godwin Obaseki, no matter how small. If you are following his campaign, you will find out that just a few, uh, yesterday or two days ago, traditional rulers in the north, Akoko Edo, Esako, they adopted him. Even to the extent that the traditional ruler gave him a title, traditional title. Why? Because the man said that gone are the days of talks, gone are the days of CDAs, gone are the days of Agbero, gone are the days where somebody will say one land for three different people and collect money from them differently. Eventually give it to um, eventually give it to one. All these things are stopped because of Godwin Obaseki. To me, the man has performed excellently well. And I do not think that any Edolite have any reason not to vote for this man. He has done very well. He has managed our resources very well. Go to government house. The normal rubble housing, the normal noise, the normal jamboree, the normal bag diving that you see in government house in the time of his predecessors in office, you cannot find it there. It is a government house. The disposition of that man, his calmness, his humaneness, his humility, and the way he attend to issues. Governor Gordon Obaseki for three years, over three years running now, despite all the accusations, Despite all the aspersion that has been thrown at him, despite all the insult, he has never opened his mouth to throw insult at anybody. The only thing you hear him say, I cannot be a governor and yet not a governor. I cannot be a pawn in anybody's political chess game. That is all. If, uh, if you give me violence, I will, give, I, I will tell you that I am the governor of, of this state. Myself and the deputy governor are the only two persons that have immunity. These are the only things you will hear him say. And this is enough to tell you that this man has a very humble background. And let me also tell you, Obaseki is not a full-time politician. You must understand this. He's a technocrat. He made his money. He made his name. He has managed billions of naira for Nigerian businessmen, both home and abroad. So if the man leave government today, 
he has something to fall into. Ask those who are contesting with him, if they fall today, if they lose today, where do they have to go to? Ask them, where have they worked to receive one uh, uh, salary at the end of the month? Ask them, which business have they set up from which they are getting money from? The billions they, 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 they parade, the properties they parade, the money they parade, the, uh, the, everything that they parade. Ask them, which work they have ever done? Ask them, which business they have ever established? Ask them, how many workers that they, they, they paid at the end of the month for which they raised those billions to, 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 raise, to acquire those properties that they are flaunting? He's not a full-time politician. He has something to fall back on. If somebody like that who has a name, we always attract my attention. What I think about Pastor Sagi is that, well, I think that um, from everything that Adam Sushomole has said about him, enough for us to rate him. It is not my duty here to tell you whether he's a pastor or not. Oshomole should have answer to that. But for everything Oshomole said about him, that being an acid beta, being a cultist, he didn't deny. When he addressed press, when he was asked that question, yes, I am a cultist. Yes, I belong to so so and so cult. But it was not a bad one. But have you ever been in the court? Yes. Were you expelled from the university? Yes. Though it was later con converted to rustication. Every act of courtesy attracts expulsion. More so, it has to do with acid beta. So for me, as a person, for me, as an individual, I do not think he deserved the vote of one Edolite. It, he is not qualified for it. He's not qualified for it. Look at all, 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 all the things, all, all his adverts. Simple agenda, plagiarize. God is our father, plagiarize. What is it that he's not saying? Make Edo great again, plagiarize. What are they? Look at all of them on the signboard. So a man who cannot boast of his own idea cannot lead a civilized and developed society like Edo State. So he does not deserve our vote. A man who is not settled in one political party. If he lost his election now, next four years, you find him in another political party. If he lost there, next four years, you find himself in another political party. A man who is restless. A man who does not believe in himself. A man who does not believe in building people. Who does not believe in building a, 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 an institution that, so that he will be able to manage it and be able to contest it. Such a man does not deserve the vote of Edo people. He's not qualified to be it. In any, in any case, in any case, as he stands now, he's not even a candidate. He's running as an independent candidate. Because you can, you, of course, you hear when he, the chairman of APC said that as far as APC is concerned, APC has no candidate. So as, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Yamu is not the candidate. He's running as, as an independent candidate. He's running against the tide. He cannot succeed. A man who told tout, agbedos and talks, to move from unit to unit, from word to word, a man who said that ironically that they are dangerous, that what they can do, that big other big men cannot do it. A man who said that this, this election is about you, the talks, not about the generality of a dope people. A man who told them that this election is about op operation, show your results. Such a man cannot rule this state because if you, if, if you give him the vote, we are going to witness again the days of Togri, the days of Agüero the days of CD, and that we will never allow again. In terms of soft project, I mean, services that are rendered that people don't see. Obaseki has called, in my own mind, he has called a hundred percent. The soft project I'm talking about that people don't see, I'm talking of payment of salary, workers' welfare, and every other thing's promotion, let me also tell you, today as we speak, before Obaseki came to power, for you to become a director, for you to become a permanent secretary, it was politicized. It is true who you know. You, sometimes you pay. You go through one big time politician, somebody is close to the governor, somebody is close to the SSG, somebody is close to the deputy, somebody is close to the chief of staff, somebody is close to the, to the speaker, to get this position. When Obaseki comes, we say no. You have intellectuals who are there, who have not grown beyond one level to another for years. And then you have those who are not qualified, manning strategic position in the ministry. For that reason, exams will be conducted. The most qualified 
should be saddled with the responsibility of managing these institutions. And so today, if you see a permanent secretary, if you see a director, if you see an executive director, they are in that position because they merit it, not because they got it through politics. So Obaseki has done extremely well. In terms of infrastructure, it's still work in progress. So I would say it's 90%. It's 90 so that when he comes back for a second term, he will use that 10% to complete the projects that are left. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty-gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akbaida, every Wednesday on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it.